want to welcome uh, the members of Yibine and those who are listening uh, on YouTube. Uh, most of you who uh, are familiar with me know that I live in Eretz Israel, and uh, needless to say, uh, there's a lot of people are wondering what it's like over here. And uh, let me uh, twist around something that Dickens said. Uh, I think this expresses it, at least for now. It's been the worst of times and the best of times. Um, as many have noticed, uh, uh, I don't think in our lifetimes we've seen such uh, a brutal slaughter of human beings and Jews um, and in such shocking numbers and such, um, um, it, there's just kind of no word to describe uh, the bestial activity that's been, that took place. Uh, so it's been the worst of times without question. And then again, it's been the, um, in a certain sense, the best of times. I, I'm i just one of many people that I've gotten, people reaching out to me from all over the world, Jewish, non-Jewish, um, just um, everyone is mentioning prayer and pretty much everyone's saying, what can we do? And uh, I, I'll describe it a little later. There's some just so uh, like uh, you're, you're almost speechless from the actions that are taking place uh, and the octus. So in that sense, it's been the best of times. Uh, so let's get to the question everyone's asking. And uh, I'm I mean, I, I'm a rabbi. I'm going to say very similar things, but that's not my focus. OK, you're going to hear and you should hear. Right. Pray. Say to Hillam, learn Torah, do chesed, reach out, be nice. All of this, all of this you're going to. And I've heard it from the top, top, top rabbis to the bottom. I've listened to a lot of different uh, great people speaking about what to do now. Uh, so that's basically what you're supposed to do. But tonight we were going to talk about how to do it, okay? How to do it in the way that will help Kal Yisrael the most. That's what we want to do so badly, okay? And thank God, I think there's some just incredible things to understand about this when you confront this. So let me start with this yeah give me a second yeah yeah okay what difference does it make whether you are doing these do, um, deeds helping praying caring what difference does it make whether you're doing it as a mitzvah whether you're conscious that you're doing it, that Hashem is mitzaveh, he commands you to do it or not. That's what we want to deal with, okay? And I think it's super important, okay? Yes, let's start that way. All right. Um, it, let's do, re remind ourselves of a shocking, a shocking um uh, part of the Chumash, okay? Uh, when you use the oral, talk to, oral law to explain it. Bilaam was not Jewish. Bilaam did not, uh, was not a fan of the Jews. He was going to do his part, God forbid, like, they're, like, they're, like this is always happening. Bilaam wasn't a fan, okay? 
Yet Bilaam saw something that we are so, so far from seeing. He understood something so important, okay? What does it say? Bilaam describes the Jewish people as rising up like a lion, an Ari, okay? Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, why is the lion called the king of beasts? Um, if you've ever, ever heard or seen what a lion can do, right? I, I, I tell the story, I was in South Africa, and at the time I was in South Africa, they, they took me to the lion park. And they told me, whatever you do, don't roll down the window, right? And if that's not enough to just trust them, the week before there was some Chinese reporter who rolled down the window and before you could, before anyone could just blink an eye, a lion took its claw and ripped their head off. Do you hear this? That's the power of a lion. Now, Bilaam is, Bilaam is describing the Jewish people and say they rise up like a lion. Now, Uncleus says that is when Hashem imbues them with military might, that's what they'll be like. Okay, that's Uncleus. And please, God, that will happen now with, all, uh, with our proper perspective. But Rashi doesn't say that. You know what Bilaam describes as rising up like a lion? Getting up in the morning for chakras, to daven in, in the morning, to pray in the morning, putting on a talis and to fill in. That's rising up like a lion, a lion that could rip a head off in a second. So how do you understand that? What was Bilaam? What Do we feel like that? Do we see that? Who, whose perception is more correct? Guess what? Bilaam, because he had Navua, He had divine prophecy, and he saw reality as it is. He saw through the physical veil. Let me read you how the Gore Arye, <laughs> no pun intended, the Gore Arye explains this. What it, what, how can you say that a Jew putting on, getting up and praying and putting on his prayer shawl is like is like a is is the fierceness of a lion okay so let me share screen i, I want you to hear this yourself okay uh paris can you give me share the screen okay uh, i will too it says it's disabled okay, okay. great fantastic All right. Can you can you see that? It's not in a in in a large, large screen, but can you, yeah, yeah, you can read it. Okay, let, I'm gonna read it to you. Okay. The Gorari once explained how is like I said, getting up in the morning, putting on to fill and praying, how is that like a, a fierce lion? Listen carefully, because this will be a game changer in your efforts go, moving forward. It says like this. He's saying that the he's saying low. Who Namor Allah mitzvos? He's saying that this description of lion isn't about military might, it's really going on mitzvos. Why? Listen carefully to what he says. Mitzvos hang gavura. Mitzvos are might, okay? And the word gavura is talking about the ability to overcome and crush, crush the forces against you. Why? Why would a mitzvah be called gavura, this overcoming might? Lefisha misha osa mitzvah. Because someone who does a commandment, poel pula elokit, nifla'a, he activates, he activates a wondrous divine action, okay? You're triggering something divine when you do a mitzvah. Lekachu Amer, Shekol Maisa Uma Hazos. Every action, every commandment, mitzvah, Torah, Tefillah, Maisim Tovim. 
These are not lowly weakling acts. These are not religious rituals. The word awesome doesn't work. These are fearsome, incredibly powerful might acts. They're divine action. There's Gavor, there's div- crushing, powerful, divine might that gets activated when you do a mitzvah. So, if you ask me, right, what should we do now, right? Everybody, it's amazing what's being done, but you have to realize that you are not sitting on the sidelines when you learn Torah, when you do mitzvahs, when you do chesed. Okay, you're not sitting on the silence. You're activating crushing divine power. That's what's taking place when you do a mitzvah. We need to understand this. Okay, now, when you're obviously doing a mitzvah, like reciting Tehillim, let's say, learning Torah, wearing tefillin, okay, it's a mitzvah, it's divine, and it's powerful. Now let's talk about let's talk about all the kindness that's being done. It is unbelievable. Okay? It's absolutely I'm telling you, it's amazing all the hesed that's going around, all the octus. It again, it's the best of times in this. I've never seen anything like this. And I've seen it. I've been here 30 years. I've seen it, but nothing like this. Everyone is coming out of the wor- woodworks trying to join together, caring, you know, the shtibel, you know, shtibel is a, a place where people just come in and out to pray. The shtibel in Harnof is packed with people learning Torah nonstop. And they called a, a prayer kennis, and I was below davening, right? I, I couldn't hear myself daven. The, the roar was incredible. This is taking place everywhere. Everyone is using their talents. Um, the, by the way, and I speak to all of you right now. Uh, I'm learning Torah. I have, thank my friend Yosef over. He says, someone set it up that you get you learn Torah for a specific soldier, right? You get their name. They get your name and this and that. Um, I'm going to mention it a couple of times. RabbiWegRightGmail.com. If you want to link to that, let me know. Okay. But let's go back to this. All right. So we're talking, this is the power of a mitzvah. But here, uh, I'll give you a couple, I'll give you an example. My wife uh, was on the phone. She volunteered for a hotline for people who are in uh, crisis in the South, you know, and she's speaking to, I'm guessing, a 20 year old girl who wants to commit suicide. And she's so terrified and just doesn't see a reason to live. And my wife is, um, you know, there's got a lot going on in our house, but uh, she's, you know, doing her best with this woman. Um, you know, this kind of care is going on everywhere. Now, so the thing is this, what, ha- why? If my wife, um, before she makes the call, you know, once she's in the call, you know, once you're helping someone, especially in emergency, once you're learning Torah, right, you need to completely focus on what you're doing and do it the absolute best you can. That's what Hashem wants, okay? Now, what's the impact if she didn't say, um, loving her neighbor or emulating Hashem's kindness? What, okay. So the impact is profound, okay? And so the the there's a lot of people doing kindness right now without, let's say, conscious intention to fulfill it as Shem's will, okay? A lot of people, and it's crystal clear that that Hashem is bringing good into world into the world in their merit, and who knows how much. It's helping, but it's probably helping incredibly in what's taking place right now. Incredible. Even without Kavana, I, I assure you the fruits of her actions, just using her as an example, even if she didn't have Kavana, profound. What everyone's doing is unbelievable. Of course, a Kaddish Baruch who notices this. What happens, right? What happens if she, before she starts, she says, a Kaddish Baruch Hu, 
I'm getting on the line with this broken Boxus Roel. You know, I want to help her. And I'm doing this because you command me to help my fellow Jew. What does that add? What does it add? So can you imagine how much more divine might descends on the action? Okay. She's bringing in a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Sure, Hashem made us, um, he, he, he made everybody with a Tzelem Elohim, and he made um, Jews to be compassionate, kind, right? Shy. These are profound qualities, and they're precious when they get activated, okay? And, and it's selfless. But when you bring Hashem into the picture, what are you doing? Who are you partnering with? What are you bringing down? What kind of crushing might against evil is taking place? It's profound, okay? So that so that's what I'm trying to say. You know, and bring it, and also just for ourselves, let's just remember that we we look at the spiritual ad, as an add-on, right? It's I got to do this add-on. That's only because we sometimes forget. We think we're physical beings having a spiritual experience here and there. But if you realize you're a spiritual being, Hashem said to your neshama, I'm sending you to this world. Stay in touch. Stay connected. Follow my instructions. Don't budge my little neshama, right? So you, you, you do Hashem, I know, I know where I came from. I know you sent me here. I know you put me in this disastrous situation in Klal Yisrael, and you want me to help, and you're commanding me to stay connected to where you come from, okay? So that's, that's my answer, is number one, you're adding so much to the situation when you bring Hashem into the picture for your neshama and for bringing down the divine might, okay? Now... I just want to I want to reveal two mitzvahs that um, are uh, one of them I spoke about last year, but the uh, the uh, the other one is is sort of brand new. Okay, so here I'm going to share with you another uh, situation. You know, my son. Uh, you know, my uh, two of my boys. Uh, <laughs> my son Yeshua He's asked me to mention his name. My son Yeshua you know, he has this beaten up car and he he and his friends who also have beaten up cars are driving uh, to the north and to the south because, you know, there was a draft of 300,000, over 300,000 people. So the army wasn't exactly fully stocked and ready for this. Right. So people are saying, I need this. I need that. We need food except, uh, there. And I, I, I should almost play this message that he sent. He's saying. It, um, they're first of all, they're desperate for things, right? And 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 he's saying everywhere you look, people are extending themselves and helping others. So you know what? It's intoxicating. Kindness is intoxicating. Being good is exhilarating and intoxicating, right? That's what people are tasting. People that are, are are reaching out to Jews everywhere saying, we're praying for you. They're feeling great, right? The the, the feelings of a soul of the Tzalem Akim are the most profound. Everyone's feeling great. Now, does that take away from it? You know, my son, it's beautiful. I'm so proud of them. And my other son, Yisgar, is going to this. It's so hard. It's the worst of times. He's going to Leviah's. Uh, 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 there's a French man who, who, who um, you know, nobody's around. And he has to sit Shiva, right? He has to sit Shiva for his son who is killed, right? By the Imak Shamas, right? So, they, they call at this convention across from the central bus station, you know, my son and 200 other Jews come to sit there with the man and, and, and help console him that his son is dead. Shem Yerachem. So this is what's going on. And people are discovering, you know, it's good to care. It's good to act. Now, where is that coming from? And is there a mitzvah we can attach to this 
to make it absolutely wildly more incredible? Yes. It says the uh, the Avta es Hashem Elokecha, love Hashem. How many times does it mention in the Torah? Nine times. And if we say in Krishna, the call of Avecha, serve Hashem with all your hearts. Says, and this is a mitzvah deraisa. It's a mitzvah to serve Hashem with your Yetzahara. And okay, let's it. That's famous. I've taught that. That you can actually channel your physicality because the Rambam says your physicality is your Yetzara, your inclination towards the physical, right? You can channel that and express your love for Shem. Okay, that's big. But I was wondering for a long time, how do, what does it mean loving a Shem with your Yetzara Tov? Okay, so here's the thing. And I also, this, this insight, I want to thank uh, Rebitz and Sarah Rigler, you know, she's writing up a book uh, about what we're doing here for Art Scroll. And I was reading what she said, and it was really so brilliant. You know, um, uh, you know, the concept of, you know, you have the religious part of your life and then the secular part, uh, you know, right? So sometimes some people will be religious on one day a week and then then they go to the secular side, right? So uh, our lives, we often divide it when we're when we're saying to Hillam, when we're helping someone, when we're learning Torah. We're that's our religious side, that's our spiritual side. But then we have our uh, then we have our mundane side, right? So guess what? It, it, it is it is incredible that you can take your right, you can make you can convert. The part of the week that was not religious, the whole time could be religious, meaning bonded to Hashem, right? But how about this? You know, why is the person helping? Because it breaks their heart to see the people suffering, right? God, thank God, there are beasts and barbarians and people say who are, who are, who are agreeing with them and they don't feel anything. So what? What a gift that you care. What a gift that you naturally want to be good, right? Fantastic. But guess what? Guess what? You, Of course, we, you know, we, we could be friendly because we grew up in America. We could be very uh, re polite, respectful because we grew up in South Africa, right? We could be all these things. They're natural, that, right? And they're naturally good things, right? You have a natural goodness that brings out the desire to help people in trouble. Ready? Take that side too. That doesn't have to be just you and your natural. Say, Hashem, I love you with my natural side. I, the natural goodness in me, the natural humor. Guess what, Hashem, I love you. So I want to convert that to you too. Nothing's for nothing's about me, Hashem. It's all about you. And Hashem knows that you will feel exhilarated. You will be uplifted if you get out of yourself and into others. And you'll get through to Hashem. So look at this. Take the good side of you. Yeah, you're naturally care right now. You're naturally cry. You're, you're naturally empathic. That's loving it. Use it to love Hashem with your hands. Or say, Hashem, I want every inclination I have, even my good. I don't want it to just be automatic. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a natural kindness and a natural compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I want it. It's yours. I love you. I'm using that also. I love you. And, and that's why I'm doing it. Okay, imagine that, that Hashem, as my son's driving his beat up car to deliver food and, and chargers to army bases, he says, Hashem, you, uh, he, that soul that came here, he, Hashem, I love you, and I want that side of me that, that wants to do good and gets high from doing good, I'm doing it because I love you, and you command me to love you, okay? Do you hear this? So we're all, we care. We're, we're, saying, we're acting beautifully right now. Just take that and use that. Love Hashem with your Yetzir Hatov. That, if you think about it, that's big. And then it releases crushing divine energy. You, you fuse into nine times the Kedusha and cr uh, I say crushing, mean crushing of evil, right? The power is extraordinary. Okay. 
that's uh, part one, okay? I, I, let me just quickly review. The, I, I'm trying to get across that when you do any of the things that these rabbis are recommending, when you learn Torah, when you recite to him, and when you pray, etc., I'm just saying, forge a union between your action and a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Just say, a Kaddish Baruch Hu, I'm speaking on the suicide hotline because I, I love you and I love this girl I'm speaking to. I love her. She is a re'acha, okay? That's why I'm doing it. So, okay, that's part partner with Hashem. The, it's might. It's crushing might. You have to realize it. And the more you do it, the more you'll believe it, okay? Now, what I want to do right now is give you a go over an approach um, to how, and we're going to do this together. This is not a lecture right now. I hope everybody with a heart and the Shama joins in this, okay? We're going to learn how to do CPR, if you will, to respond to uh, news that indicates that Jews are in trouble, okay? So let me share this with you, and I'll explain, I'll explain uh, how we're going to do it. Um, okay, just give me one second. Um. Mm, okay. Is that it? Apologize. Oh, here it is. Okay. Let me make it big. Okay, Paris, we're good? Yes, great. All right. Let me explain something. Um, the Tehillim, and when the rabbis tell you certain Tehillim, there is, it is the most incredible this there is, okay? It, it absolutely is. But what I want to talk about is the fact that you don't always have time to recite Tehillim. You don't always have time to go through to do a, a 20 principles of tshuva, right? So what I what, what we put together here is how you in a few in, in less than a minute or two, you can have offer a provide a, a profound response for people in trouble. OK, and the first one is truly amazing. OK, so let me explain. All right. Um when you hear a siren go off, right, or you hear the news, and they, we're hearing sirens. You're, you're maybe hearing news if you're if you're not in Israel. But what do you do, right? What can you do, and and how can you do it quickly? And here's the thing: is it's based. You know, I like to bring uh, some of the uh, more advanced psychology approaches right now, the ones that are let's say effective. So there's a concept called elastic habits. Let me just explain the concept. Is should you work out three times a, a week, 40 minutes, uh, uh, 40 minutes a time if you're my age? According to my doctor, yes. Okay. Now, is it what's better? Um, if I'm not going to be able to do that, I don't have time. Is it better to do 25 something? Of course, right? So elastic habits means you have your ideal habit, but then you have a drop down minimum that you just can't make an excuse for not doing. Okay. What I'm presenting to you here, you if it when we see how to do it, you can't make an excuse not to do it. It's it's really quick and really effective in truth if you have Kavana for the mitzvahs. So uh just have to introduce one quick concept. That is a mind blower, and then we're going to get to work. Okay, so the, uh, last year I wanted to um, already there were you know it was the there were terrorist attacks surprise surprise, and people were just freaking out from the news, and so I I, I was preparing a, a class for Yibane on how do you respond like what can you do what mitzvahs can you do to help people. Uh, when you hear that there's bad news and it's not like 
right next door and you can't go there, right? So um, I asked Reb, Bre- uh, I, I, I made a list for Reb Breitowitz and and then he he said um he added one or he, he mentioned it he says no say but all im haber by by sharing the pain of the other person so i said rabbi brettler i understand uh, i'm talking about how can i help them directly i know that i'm doing a mitzvah when i feel bad about it and i'm emulating a shem but how do i help them they're not, if, if I'm not in front of him, if I go over, like my son Yisrael, he goes and he sits chiba and, he's, uh, and he, he looks with compassion at the person suffering, okay, I understand that helps. But Reb Reitowitz is saying that, you know, if you feel for their pain, you can relieve their pain, okay? Do you hear this, people down south? I'm not down south right now. So let me explain. It's so amazingly deep. OK. The because here's the thing, a lot of people are, are too broken at times uh, when any time they hear any more about what happened on Shabbos, they're just depressed and broken. Can that be sanctified? Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen to this. So Reb Reitowitz explained that physically, am I down south? So if I if I hear about you know um, uh, what happened to this poor woman, or if I here, let's do it right now, okay? Let's think about the people that are currently in captivity by Hamas right now. Think of how they feel, okay? Think of how their family feels, okay? Now, if you feel pain over that, okay? If you feel pain. This is what, if all right, let's do it, right? And then I'm going to tell you what 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 happens, okay? Here, let's again. This is we're we're doing this right now. We're not. It's not meant to be a a lecture, okay? Um, in order to to feel things, you obviously have to stop for a second, okay? So I want everyone who's got the guts to do this to think about. Um, the parents who, who who discovered their kids were dead, their babies were butchered. People who are being kid are in captivity right now. Children that are traumatized by the siren. If you could have seen the um, heard the scream that my beautiful little four year old granddaughter made, you know, and she jumped into her father's arms. It, this is happening all over the place, right? So have in mind that, you know, let's make this a divine act, okay? I'm emulating you. The Shina feels the pain that's going on much more than we do. And I, I love, I love these people. And I feel horrible about what's going. I feel there. I'm. I'm just. I feel horrible. And I'm doing this because you command me. I'm bringing you into the pain that it naturally rises up, because you made me a compassionate being. And now I want to link it to you and do it because you command me to do it. Says Rabbeidowitz that. On some level, we alleviate their pain. Our feeling pain right now alleviates theirs. How does this work? Because the Jewish people, he explains, are one neshama, right? One big neshama with 600,000 parts divided up amongst us, right? And even though um, their, their body doesn't feel relief, their soul does. There's a part of them. And also because do when we bring pain, do we deserve that pain? No. But when we take it on, Hashem says, look, I have to alleviate their pain because these people are taking this pain upon themselves and our connecting, our compassion for them relieves them of their suffering on some level. Okay? So that's care. So what I'm saying, we just did it. But I'm saying, you. Can, how long does it take to care? 
So when you hear a siren or when you hear a report or, and, and discover more of the, the suffering and the troubles that are going on when you hear, take a minute to care the shame mitzvah, the kayim, the mitzvah of my creator to care. So take that pain that's going to rise up anyhow, sanctify it and draw down divine might. Next, prayer, okay? Again, Tehillim, do it. I, I, you know, there's six derises in Tehillim. So, so I assure you that if you have the time for Tehillim, it's the best. But let's say you hear a siren, you hear a news report. It's happening all the time. People are, you know, glued to the news, right? So you may not have the uh, bandwidth or the time to say a whole tefillin. So guess what? So first of all, when you pray for Jews in trouble, you're fulfilling a Torah commandment according to everybody. So have in mind, we've discussed this a lot, when you, whenever you say that to Hillam, you recite that to Hillam, whenever you're praying for Claudius Riddell in your prayers, right? When Okay, but here, ready? Tefila Katsara. Ready? Hashem Yazor! Hashem, please help! Zel. Two minutes of sincere to feel two um, two minutes two seconds Hashem Yazor. But I before I said I haven't, I'm praying because I'm praying for Jews in trouble as you come in Hashem Yazor Hashem Yishmor right the North Hashem Yishmor everybody do it right now Hashem Yishmor have in mind that you're praying for Jews in, in times of trouble Kasher Tziv Hashem and just say Hashem Yishmor. Okay, two seconds to care, two seconds for prayer. One more, repair, okay? The earthquakes that happen in Turkey and the de natural disasters that happen in Morocco, I'm sorry, Don't I know I'm going to sound like a fanatic. I'm just bringing the Gamar and Yavamos. It says all the calamity in the world is for the sake of the Jews. OK, uh, for us to repair, to improve. OK, it, it, it's, it's a heavy responsibility, but uh, but we have to realize that there is a chuva hack. OK, the 20 principles better. Vidoy, Harata, you know, and uh, Kabbalah, a full thing better. Right. OK, but ready here. Hear Hore Chuva. I spoke with Rev Tugenhoff from London, a, a great Posik and Rav, and he he he's gone to town on this. Is a big he says, you you realize pangs of regret. Pangs of saying, you know, I gotta stop getting upset at the kids. I gotta stop doing this. I feel terrible. Hashir Siva Hashem. There you go. Tshuva, the mitzvah of tshuva can be done. A little regret. A little, ay, Hashem, I, ah. When I, when I flippantly speak critically about a someone, do you, ay, Lashanara, ah. Right? Certainly is a great time to set an hour where you're going to guard your, um, guard your tongue and, and have in mind all the mitzvahs. But look, Repair can be done in seconds, okay? So um, this is what I want to offer you, okay? Don't, you know, if you can do more, do more, of course. But please, please, you have to realize if we can just activate divine might, if we can do it as a commandment, remember you are in the Shema, get what you came here for, you came, the whole thing is all set up for you to bond with Hashem, to recognize the beauty of human beings and fellow Jews, this is all, we're here, we're spiritual beings, we came here for this, but let's do it with a full mind and a full heart, even in a few seconds. Okay, I, I just really want to um, thank everybody um, and just in, to, in, to continue to encourage Claudius Rail and the world as a whole to not become road about this. Okay, Rabbi, um, Rabbi Kellerman said in a few days, 
this could soften. Don't let it soften, okay? It does, just takes a few seconds to connect, okay? All right, Kaddish Baruch uh, I just want to mention in closing that um, if you'd like this poster that you see uh, on screen right now, uh, I also um, have a poster on the mitzvahs of Teh Tehillim. And if you would like to learn Mahazek, um, a soldier, by learning for them, uh, and uh, so just it, Rabbi Wegbright, uh, uh, W-E-G-B-R-E-I-T. If you're in Yibane, you'll see my name there, Rabbi Wegbright at gmail.com. Just email me and we'll make sure you get it. And for those on the WhatsApp group, uh, we'll post these as well, Bizrash. Okay. <laughs>